Good morning, my name is Trevor Bloon. I'm a technician at Wilkins Harley Davidson. Um, today we're going to be giving a class on how to install 14 inch Z bars onto a 2019 Street Glide. Today we're going to be changing out riser bushings and wiring the handlebars. First thing we'll take the turn signals off. We take the acorn nuts off first. When I take the fairings off, I always remove these two screws first. And it's really important on the street glides. Any other bike, you'd have the passing lamps here. So if the fairing did kind of drop, it wouldn't go nowhere. But before when I take the windshield off, I take all three of the screws out, take the windshield off, then I put the center one back in, then I remove everything out so I don't have that chance of it falling off. The older 13 and below, this kind of clips in, the new style kind of clips in, the other ones didn't. So if you remove those screws and you take one off down here, it would always do that one time then you never forget it. <laughs> you got a nice big dent in your fender. Yep. This will come off and then I'm going to disconnect everything inside and then I'll take the whole thing right off. That's what's really nice about the 14s and up, how simple it really is to, then you have every, your ex, everything you need to get to is right there for the handlebars. I like to take it completely off, it's just too much of a risk for me to think, you, you could do it. I have brought it forward before looking for a connector that when I slid everything back on, that got tucked up underneath and I couldn't get to. But it just, it makes me too nervous. I'd rather just get it, get it out of the way. Pop that windshield off. And that's why I took those off because this will give you enough chance to pull it forward, get that right out of there. And like I said, I'll just put this screw back in just to get rid of that chance. You gotta take your switch off, boom. And then you got the two screws on the side. And then you got a couple things to unplug and you get it right out of there. there take that one back out. And it just pops right off. Kind of hold it. Headlights. So put this over here. We've already removed the bolts for this, so that pops right off. And then it's just unplugging. You don't have to unplug everything, just the main harness that comes up. A lot of this stuff stays plugged in. It was trial and error the first few times when you picked it up and you see stuff still plugged in. <laughs> Putting the higher bars, it's gonna wear those. I'll show you the difference of them, the polyurethane bushings and their stock ones. They'll be good for a couple months, but after a while they'll start moving. I've seen a lot of them come in, especially for inspections, and they're all over the place. And they're cheap too. I think they're roughly around $30. And you're already in there anyway, you know, to save that time. Everything's off. Another thing that's a big difference between the 14s and up to is the twist grip sensor. When we do them on 13 and below, we recommend it upgrading to the Screaming Eagle because it's one solid piece. The stock ones is a two piece, and it's a lot more wires going through the bars than the earlier bikes, because not the HD land style and it'll come unplugged. Even if you tape them and you're pulling and pushing, it's easier just to get the one piece. A lot of these going to a 14, I've got plenty. Cause you'll see when I take this off, it's actually zip tied up like that. So I got a lot more. I don't really have to extend these. These I will have to extend. And the nice thing about the 14s and up also is that you don't have to remove this to get this off. 13s you'd have to remove this, which, which isn't difficult. Just another step. If you're just doing black lines, you don't have to change these. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna be changing those because we're putting braided lines on it. And there's a lot, each one of those is a separate piece that goes all the way back to the ABS module. They have to go all the way, each one, yep, that's separate. One, two, you'll have that one and then another one. A lot of brake lines on the ABS system. I've already flushed these. I've flushed the clutch and the brake just for instructional purposes. I don't have air out here and that dot four is very corrosive. If you do, when you go to do that and you crack into your lines and suck that stuff out, always cover up your paint or any parts around it because that stuff will, will damage paint and chrome. And it's easy to take these tank in and it's the same as yours. You just disconnect this here, pull up, it disconnects. I can do that now. I always twist this to make sure this is twisting nice. Twist, pick up, disconnect. Simple and easy as that. You got two bolts underneath there. You got that bolt there, bolt on the other side. I take the tank off, put a towel over it, and you can actually pick the tank up, flip it around backwards, and it'll sit right nice right there. When I do motor work, same thing, instead of taking the whole tank off. And it's nice, it's not like the old days when you had the crossover line that goes underneath. You don't got none of that no more. So you don't have to cut and pinch it off. I just put a little tape right there. 
both sides. And this, so basically you just pick it up. You're gonna get, there's two little slots here. It'll free of that. And then I lean it forward and it'll slide right off. It's unplugged. So you get you slide it forward. Okay, look up, make sure it's not touching. And it's pick up. Yeah, see? Oh, there we go. I'm gonna put that over there too. You can see this is all your twist grip sensor here. Cut those zip ties. You've got plenty. You got all that. So that you ain't gonna, we are not gonna have to extend that at all. These we will, and there's two, two different styles. We're gonna do both. A lot of the, like these bars, LA choppers come with their own kits. With the beef, you tell them you want 16 inch, they're gonna send you everything you need for that 16 inch. Burley does the same thing. Well, it's just nice they have everything that comes, so you don't have, it takes the guesswork out of it. So I'm gonna take all the switch housings off now. And like I said, these are already bled down, so there's no fluid in it. It might be a little bit left in the line, but there shouldn't be. I get creative. I got my own little way of pulling the wires through the bars, which I'll show you. But you could use anything. I use Christmas ribbon. It's strong. I was looking for something. Well, I used to use a string with a nut, and I would shake the nut through. And I was looking for something easier. And the guy that used to work here was like, Christmas ribbon. He's like, think about when you're a kid trying to open the Christmas presents, how strong that stuff was. And he was right, and you blow it right through with the airlines. It works really well. <laughs> I always put that back in there just so in case it leaks at all. This is the switch. That's what it looks like now. Oh, okay. So it actually you slide right in there. It's not the little. And to get that little switch off, to put it on, it just slides on. Actually, you can push it up. Slides on, you hear it click, push down, it's in spot. Take it off, you just pop it up like that and then just slide a screwdriver up underneath and just lightly pick up and it slides right off. It's just a little tab that holds it on. We're gonna do the riser bushings now. I'm gonna leave this as one but unit. Down, I like to leave this on when I put the new riser bushings on because it keeps so everything straight, keeps everything tight. Roll, 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 roll. There's a few ways to do that. I've done it like on the ground because you gotta turn it to get to the, the actual position. bolts that hold the risers on. Or a lot of times I've taken the front tire off when it's on my lift. So that's easy enough so I can move everything. Dan, one of our other master techs, did it another way, and this is going to be my first time doing it this way, actually. Where he takes the whole top of it right off, then he goes to the bench. It's pretty easy. It's only three bolts. So that's the way I'm going to do it this time. So you can just take the V. I'll show you this bolt here. And then there's two pinch bolts, or one pinch bolt on each side, and that whole thing will come right off. So that's what we're going to do it this way. I always try to pay attention to orientation too, so I try to get it right back the same way. With all the lines and everything. Some of them, if they're a little bit longer, it's okay to, especially on the road line, there's an actual, you bring it way around like that and you tie it up underneath. But you can fold them a little bit, as long as you're not pinching them too much of an extreme way.
Perfect. This might be the way I do it from now on. The torque on these is 35 to 40 foot pounds. And then your torque on your riser, riser bolts is like 20, 18 to 20. Putting ape hangers on, I go a little tighter than that because you need a little more clamp force. I tighten them instead of, I don't really put a torque wrench on them. I put a torque wrench on these on the actual handlebar clamps, I do not. And these here, usually you can take a screwdriver. Sometimes you can pull them right out. Usually I take a screwdriver and pop them. But you can see these compared to these. Yeah. I mean, that's still got the little plastic in there, but that's a lot. These will wear out quick with bigger buyers. $30, you're already there. I, I think they're roughly 30 bucks. Dan's a genius, because this is definitely the easiest way to do this. Look at that. Usually these will slip right back in with nothing. If they go in a little hard, I put a little bit of silicone on it just to lube them up a little bit. Usually they'll pop right back in. Yeah, there we go. And with the 14s and above, you can get a new set of bolts because they're longer. Um, 13 and below, you don't have to use these. You can throw them away or throw them in a jar. That's it. Pretty easy. Nice to have it off the bench. And with these also, they come with a lock patch. I still put a drop of red Loctite. Even with lock patch stuff, I do that. In fact, I'm gonna go grab a little bit of Loctite. I'll be right back. But the reason why I keep this in here is when you torque these down and make sure everything stays straight. Torque spec, 40 foot pounds. So here we go, no bushings on. Then we'll see how this goes back on. Being a new bike, it's nice too. Everything comes apart really nicely. Torque that, but you can see without being able to move it, the bolts are you can't get to them. See how you got yeah. that little plate? Sure. So you'd have to turn turn it either way. So like I said, you can take the tire off. The back side, correct? Come up underneath, yes. Which usually you got to use a long wobble extension, get up underneath there. It's not easy to get it to them. That worked very well. The hardest. Part was just getting that little, get it to line back up, going back on, but that's way quicker than taking the tire off. And it's nice to have it up on your lift. This top clamp's 26. And a good way to check too, to make sure these are straight. If you'd have to loosen them, the best way to do it is you can, you can loosen these and you can twist them sometimes, but should be straight. As I look across here, I look right across these caps. Look Drake on and look right across here. Looking down on it, it should be even. And even look in the back, make sure you know it's in the same part of the hole or whatever, any type of reference area, but those are right on. So I can take these off now. Pull this twist grip sensor right out of there. I can do that while it's on the bite. Sometimes if those are a, a small, if they're stay at like an inch size, I'd probably take this here, I'll take off, but those are bigger, thicker bars. I should be able to pull it through fine enough. 
And this here is a case, the only thing this plugs into is if you get the heated grips. That's your the heated grip, you actually pop this little thing off here and yeah. there's a two prongs. So when you slide your heated grip on there, it plugs into there and then that provides the power to it right there. That'll plug into that side, which is your thermostat side. Since the 14s, I don't think I've had to extend extend this sensor. I mean, there's a lot there. And it's only going, when it comes out of the bar, it's only going right there. Still got all that. Maybe 18s, but I haven't put a set of 18s on the new bikes. Even 16s, a lot of people are going with 14s now. We don't even barely, rarely put 16s on anymore. I'll take these, these can come right off now. I'm done with these bars. The, the switches will be on that set of bars. That's the only set that'll be on. The ones that we wire, those there will be the ones that stay on the bike. When we're going in these, everything's gonna be internal, which cleans it up really nice. One side, I'm gonna use the connector like this. And then the other side, I'm gonna solder. I've used these for years. These used to come, um, I don't know if anybody's heard of the Heat Demons, the old style heated grips. These used to come with them and I liked using these. The kits, this will be the first time I use these too. Come with this, it's like a Chinese finger trap. Put them in there, put the wires in there and then I put a little tape around it. Or that's, this will be the first time I use these and then pull through. So we're gonna try these today. So I'm gonna tape this to one of the strings is I'll use this to pull the twist grip sensor through. But you could probably use the ribbon. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it hold. it's just something more solid to run the tape to. Cause it's not fun when you pull them through and then the tape lets go and, oh, yeah. especially the twist grip sensor side, cause you got that extra, that side's no big deal. But there's many ways to do it. This is just the way that's always worked for me. I usually only have one of these going through at a time, but I had no air. Oh, there we go. There it is, already through. Z bars, doing the round ones a lot easier. Z bars are a little because you got that 90 degree. Once in a great while, you might catch a burr up there. I've seen that happen. It's rare, but I have seen that happen. And when I pull these through with the twist grip, because the twist grip, I pull through second. I try to have that one on top of this one, just so it goes, especially with Z bars, it goes over the top. I don't know if that, it just seems to be a little easier that way for me. Beautiful. Another thing that's nice to use when you got it, if you got a vise is an old set of risers, you can put the bars right in that and you got it sitting right up top. That's what I would be doing out back. Cool, so that one's ready. Now we're gonna get that other one through. Cause this is the most labor intensive part. Especially on a 13 and older bike. Yeah, now we'll pull the wires through. I always check these, I'm probably gonna have to extend before. But sometimes I'll pull these through if there's enough wire. These I don't think there's gonna be. No, there's not gonna be. So I'm gonna have to actually extend these. And this side I'm gonna solder. I'm gonna solder on the extension. The other side I got the plug-in. Uh, sometimes you can have them, they'll come out here. And that's really nice when you don't, when you have the plug-ins. If I was gonna pull, which I'm gonna the other side, pull a plug through, I plug it in, then I tape the electrical tape around. These lock in really nice, but it's just not, it's the stress on the plug and you don't want it to come unplugged. And when I pull them through too, these little zip ties, I'll cut. 
Because that right there could catch on that Z and make your life miserable. I'll take that sticker off too. Streamline as much as possible. And the old style, if you upgrade to the Screaming Eagle, it comes with three different sets of wires. You got the two wires from each side of it. It's a yellow and a black uh, coated wire. And then you have the heated grip one. I'll take electrical tape and I tape them as tight as possible too. You got, so, like I was saying, so much more wires going through. It just thins them right out. Anything to make your life easier. But these, the newer 14 and up HD LAN systems, if you only have a couple wires, it's a lot easier. And this is when those push pins come in place. Let me show you. Take that little push pin, slide it in there. You'll feel the little bump of the tab. And then just pull lightly. Pick up on it, pull lightly, and it'll come right out. These are really sensitive. Um, we had a lot of trouble with them at first because we didn't know this trick. And trying to get something down in there, I had filed picks. I've done a lot of things and end up pulling too hard and end up breaking the, pulling this right out. You don't see these. You just, I've not really seen these go bad. But that's all it is. Pop those in there. And this, the twist grip sensor one, what I do with that right here? is a little more finicky, smaller. Same type of thing, you don't have to get no safety, but I take this, see I've ground it down even smaller and thinner to get in those holes, they're a lot smaller. And these also, if you remove, it's not separate colors, you got red, white, and black. You got them on the top and you got them on the bottom. What I do, I use my phone, I take a picture of that tab and that's the blue one. Easiest way to, you know what I mean? If you're gonna pull them wires out, you got the blue on the top. Yep. In all actuality, too, if you were extending these, you could you can just cut those off. I was just doing that to show how they come out. Do a lot of soldering. Highly recommend this. It's a nice little gun. I'll cut the conduit back just a little bit, just give me a little more room. If you're doing this on an older style bike to a 313 below with a lot more wires and you're soldering, I recommend staggering it because having that much more wires, you got one big clump of solder, that's no fun getting past one of those Zs. You stagger it, it'll be be it works a lot better. If I was doing these, I recommend getting the plug-in ones. It gets rid of all the soldering altogether. You could uh, butt connector, use butt connectors too, that's quicker, but that's just another, if you're gonna do that, I would definitely stagger them too. I usually just solder it. And I try to not have as much solder so it doesn't lose its rigidity. And you don't want no burrs, obviously, so don't stick through the little burr coming through that there. Going into there could cause a lot of problems for us, too. Most of the time we do these though, it's usually the plug ones. These came with the kit. I just thought I'd do this, both do both ways. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna grab a heat gun so I can do the shrink tube and then we'll pull those through and then we'll get the other one that.
Perfect. And I'll usually pull the conduit up to here. Right into where I cut it. Put a little tape around there so it stays nice and protected. I will take these off before I pull through. It's just one last thing, like I said before, to catch. These bars are pretty big. This side I probably won't, but this side I will. I just like having less. It's not a big deal to pull them, take them off. Hey, use this one. Now I'm gonna feed these in there. Oh, I use a lot. I use a lot of electrical tape on these jobs, just for this reason. I don't want it to come apart inside there. Especially when I pull the other sense with a twist grip sensor through, just because it's not as easy to blow the string back through when there's already wires in there. And on these Z's too, it's easy to just push pull, push pull little by little, get it over that sharp edge. I think these are gonna be all right though. If you have trouble pulling these through with the string, then you know you might have, there might be a burr or something in there. Yeah, I'm already past it. These are gonna go through nice. Yeah, beautiful. Look at that. Already through. Love it. Hopefully the other one pulls through as easy. Right there, perfect. Let's cut this off for now. I get a razor blade to cut that later. Now if we can get to that twist grip sensor through there. It's all smooth sailing, but I think it'll be fine. This might be the last thing. These the snake pulls through. Cause that worked really well. This stuff worked really nice. I just always find it easier to pull the scent, this one through second. Because of the older style bars, I just got in that habit because I like to try to pull it up and over. And okay. But it, it doesn't matter, whatever works. I like to do this side first because there's two, then get this one yep. done, the other one flies through. Um, but no, it doesn't matter. And this here, I might tuck this back, but I think it's gonna be fine. I'll probably leave that forward. If I had trouble pulling any of this stuff through, I would take these off. I would, might even take this conduit off to make it thinner, but I think because how easy all this is going through, I think it will be fine. And what I do with the snake is I'll tape it from here, here, and then I'll curl this up and run another thing of tape so it catches the tape. Cool. A little resistance right there once that plug gets around that corner. I think it went. sailing from here on out. The good thing with these though, if, if something does go wrong with it, you're not left on the side of the road. It goes into a limp home mode. 
You're probably not going to do much more than 30 miles an hour. It goes all off timing, but you'll get home. So that's, you know, that's the good thing about them. I mean, I think fly-by-wire was first re in introduced in jet planes, so, <laughs> you know, they got to have some type of fail-safe. Yeah, it would have been a lot easier if I took the plug out, but I got it. Got it through. It's about to get easy. It's through now. There we go. Little by little. And the Z doesn't help. Oh, I see what happened. The conduit rolled up on me. That's why it's coming through hard. There it is. So I get that conduit. Yeah. See how that's nice and loose? Yeah. If it goes in there tight, there's that. Oh, I pulled it through too much now. I can't get to it. If there's a little brown o ring on that sensor, you can take that off and it will slide in a lot better. Most bars now, it was when they the bit when it really started to kick off and I don't think a lot of weren't putting a much uh, research into it, but now they're all there we go. And then that just locks in on the tabs on the end. That's it. I like to leave a little, I'm going to try to pull some of that back. That got pulled through a little, nah, that'll be fine there. Leave a l I usually leave a little bit of slack there because it's easier to push it up in there than it is to, if it's too, sometimes like this one did, it pulled a little bit through, but that'll be fine there. So that hard part's over. I'm still in a great mood, so. <laughs> Cool, I'm gonna pull this one back through. This works very well. And this comes with, uh, which one did I cut? That one, this comes with LA Chopper wire kits. Works good. Should be enough. Beautiful. No. Not beautiful. I'll bear it back. I gotta blow this back through with some air. If it didn't have the Z, you could push this through. If it just was curved, you could push this through. That's why these were so nice back when we used to do a lot of those heat demons. You could push it right through because it's round, but. Brake lines are tedious because it's just long because you're, you're changing a lot of them and I don't, that dot four, I'm so nervous about it getting, you know what I mean? Getting it on something and it makes a mess. And this will be easy because I've already sucked it all out. But on this side will be a lot easier because I'm just going to plug, plug the extension in. Yeah, I'm going to tape that connector. I mean, they're strong, but I like taping it all up too because you're pulling on the connections too and just gives it more. But this side will, will fly through because there's nothing else in there. It's just that. I really like this stuff. This stuff works well. Already through. Yep, yeah, there we go. That side is beautiful. With the extension, it was a little bit longer, so I'm gonna leave, leave that right there. I'll get a razor and cut those off. I like to put a little bit of, uh, once I get these set too, I like to put a little tape around here just to keep it away from the edges and it keeps it all together, or zip tie or anything like that. But now I can put the bars on. <laughs> I have seen some bigger bars and it's it's a lot more rare now without the perforation right here um, I don't really like the, the, to put bars on like that because I mean the 
you have so much more leverage, it could cause it to slip. But if you do an old trick to get around that, so you take emery cloth and cut a piece, put it down in there and put it on the top too and clamp it and that'll give it that same, same grip. I haven't had to do that in a long time, but I have seen bars come through like that. And like I said, the torque spec on these are very low. I, I don't go by the factory torque spec when I put bigger bars on. I just tighten them down because I, I think the spec is like 18 to 20. That's, it's all right with a lower bar, but something you got a lot of leverage on, I don't feel comfortable. But one thing I do, the clamp is more on the bottom, so I tighten, I tighten them all even, then I tighten these first, the bottom ones. You get more of the clamp load down the bottom. These, I usually go and I like it when the customer comes in at this point so you can put them where they want it, it's the easiest. But 99% of the time, if I go just a little bit back, right about there, they're happy right there. Then, I'm not gonna be putting the housings or anything back on, but I just clip these back up in there. I might pull that through a little bit more if I can. It'll let me. Which one's that? Yeah. <laughs> There's a little uh, zip tie in here too I always cut. It's, just, it's hard to get back in there and sit nice. I always cut that one too. But that'll sit nice in there. In there. And it pushes it up in there so it won't, nothing will get pinched. There's actually a little lip there that does that which is nice. And when you're putting these like a fly-by wire bike, don't put this way tight on there because once you tighten everything up, it could cause it to bind. You should still, it should still feel like a cable bike where you have that little bit of back and forth. So what I do is I just bear, but you don't want to go too far because I've seen them slip. So I just put it on as tight as it can go and then I back it off just until it starts moving a little, little bit so it don't bind. It, it, there's just a, no, it just slides right on. Cause you got teeth in there too. And it'll slide right on. No, uh, when you put your, your actual housing on that little lip right there. Yeah. Holds it, but you don't want it tight against that because like I said, it, when you tighten everything, it could bind and you still want it to snap back. So you want it to have a little bit of back and forth. So I just bring it out just enough till it starts doing that. And then you're good. I'll put the, I'm gonna put those the connectors back on but where they plug in is that guy there put this back on Some bars especially uh, some bikes come in the road glides the kit will come through with a new one of these also without a pin and This will actually just bolt on top. There'll be a hole for it Some bars do that but A lot of them just utilize that bottom clamp just pound the pin out I'll go grab a razor blade and I'll pop those back on. I'll get that tape off there. Yep, nice and straight. I'd still check them, make sure they're straight across. Those are nice, those feel good right there. There. Well, that's as far as I can go today.